Hello everyone, welcome back. We know that the main function of respiratory system is respiration, but there are other more functions which are also important. Let's discuss about the respiratory clearance and panting in this video. When we compare the surface area of the lungs with that of the surface area of the body, the surface area of inner aspect of the lung is 125 times larger than that of the surface area of the body. So it can act as a route of exposure for various foreign particles including infectious agents. The removal of particles that have been inhaled in the lungs is called as respiratory clearance. The respiratory clearance is of two types. The clearance of substances in the respiratory tract up to the bronchioles is called as upper respiratory clearance and the removal of foreign particles in the alveoli is called as alveolar clearance. First we will see about upper respiratory clearance. The upper respiratory tract is lined by ciliated epithelium. So in this the epithelial surface has finger like projections called ciliae. And there are certain cells called goblet cells which are responsible for production of mucus. And the epithelium is covered by a layer of moving mucus blanket. This moving mucus blanket is made up of mucus and alveolar fluid. The mucus is secreted by mucus secreting cells like goblet cells. And the alveolar fluid is the fluid that is lining the alveoli. When any foreign particles come in contact with the upper respiratory tract, they are trapped in the moving mucus blanket and the mucus blanket is moved towards the pharynx with the help of movement by cilia. This moving mucus blanket travels at the rate of 15 mm per minute. Once it reaches the pharynx, the mucus from the trachea is swallowed into the esophagus. So the foreign particles are excreted via feces. Next one is alveolar clearance. The alveoli is made up of squamous epithelial cells. The outer layer is covered by a clear fluid called alveolar fluid. The alveolar clearance can occur in many mechanisms. Certain inhaled particles can get dissolved with the alveolar fluid. Certain particles can join with the alveolar fluid and transported to the tracheobronchus and excreted along with the moving mucus blanket. And certain particles can also get phagocytosized with the help of macrophages called alveolar macrophages. These macrophages are always found with dust particles. So these are also called as dust cells. Certain particles can be taken up by the epithelial cells through the process of endocytosis. Once these cells take the foreign particles, they get detached from the alveoli and removed along with the mucus. Some particles neither get solubilized nor get phagocytosis by the alveolar macrophages. These particles stimulate a connective tissue reaction. In this the fibroblasts are activated and they get accumulated around these particles. So the inhalation of certain dust particles causes the fibrous induration of the lungs. This part is completely isolated from the lung. This is called as pneumoconiosis. So based on the type of particles, this pneumoconiosis can also be called as silicosis, anthracosis, asbestosis. If the silicon particles are inhaled, it is called as silicosis. If carbon particles are inhaled, it is called as anthracosis. And asbestos particles are inhaled, it is called as asbestosis. Next we will see about panting. Panting is seen in many animal species but is more common in dogs. The respiratory center of the dog not only receives the usual stimuli but also receives the signals according to the core body temperature and hence helps in thermoregulation. If the body temperature is increased, the respiratory center increases the dead space ventilation. So when the dead space ventilation increases, there will be increased evaporation of the fluids and thereby heat dissipation occurs. Panting can occur in three patterns. First one is nose nose. So inhalation occurs through nose and the exhalation also occurs through nose. And the second one is nose and nose mouth. So the inhalation occurs through nose and the exhalation occurs through both nose and mouth. And the third one, the inhalation occurs through both nose and mouth and exhalation occurs through both nose and mouth. The first pattern of panting is seen when the body temperature is slightly higher than that of the normal. And the second and third are seen when the body temperature is more higher than that of the normal body temperature. We knew that the heat dissipation occurs by evaporation of fluids. 
the upper respiratory tract of the dog contain certain glands called lateral nasal glands the secretion from these glands are evaporated to cause heat dissipation so these glands are uh, analogous to that of sweat glands and their secretion increases when the core body temperature increases above the normal and these are the functions of the respiratory system other than respirations